Hi everybody! I'm about to dive into a 60 minute soul rebirth journey session. So we're going to be exploring energy work and wisdom for a client. This client has shared some super cool details and I have a feeling you guys will love to hear about these. Um, it's really neat to know what other people are exploring when it comes to spiritual awakening. So I'm going to share some of the background details and then um, we'll, we'll uh, explore the, the actual goals for the session and see where spirit takes us. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna try and sum this up. There's so many cool things you shared. Okay, so you say, um, I've been going through a spiritual awakening for a couple of years now and wanted to know where I'm headed next on this journey. Okay, so we're gonna explore where you're heading next on this spiritual awakening journey. So some of your background, you practice witchcraft for two years consistently, all light work. And uh, so you were working with some really unique spirits, um, some really cool names. They kind of make me think of Hawaii. Um, the names, I don't know, maybe it has nothing to do with that. But um, Olokan, Ishu, Ishu, Ishue, Orn Mula, Okosi, the Warriors, Babalui, Ai. <laughs> and it's so cool though. It's just like, uh, I love, I love this stuff. All right, so you kind of moved on from that and you got serious about meditation. You've been working with Joe Dispenza. That's very exciting. Um, you're working on meditating two hours a day, pineal gland, chakra blessing, etc. You're learning quantum physics, neuroscience, familiar with 3D, 4D, 5D realities. Um, you've had some mystical experiences um, in meditations, including light flashes, massive body shakes, um, you once saw two aliens with your eyes open during a kaleidoscope session. This is some really cool stuff. Um, you had a reader that you worked with in person um, that told you a few times that uh, she's sensing you have the ability to channel with your voice and something with your hands, she said, um, if you wanted to. And you wanted to know what I sensed when it comes to psychic gifts. Um, some other cool things. You wake up smelling flowers in the middle of the night regularly. My ears are not really ringing, but more when I feel a sense of spiraling in the left ear primarily. A little bit in the right. Sometimes both at the same time. Funny, my left ear started doing this as I'm typing to you. Um, okay. So, um, thank you so much for all of these, this cool background about you. Um, it's really exciting to share that with others so they can get some, um, you know, ideas of what, what anybody could really be jumping into to expand their, their horizons of a spiritual awakening. So I'm going to go ahead and relax and get connected to you. Um, and we'll see where spirit takes us, but we're going to be exploring any messages related to the next step in your spiritual awakening journey and any type of psychic gifts, anything revolving around that. So, okay, I'm going to relax now. Hmm. So, this is an interesting beginning. I do feel a lot of weight. It feels like a bit, a lot of mud, and it's mud because I can actually stick my fingers into it, and it's squishy, um, and it's just sitting on top of the head, and it's raining, and the mud's actually kind of coming down the sides, down the sides and the front, um, and I'm actually in kind of a jungly type place, and um, that's what it looks like here. But this, I will say, is a lot of energy weighing down the head. And let me take a look at this. You look, I mean, there's something exotic about the way that you look, but you, you're Caucasian with blonde hair. You look um, youthful. There's something kind of stealthy about your appearance and elf-like even. Um... I don't know, you you were talking about warrior spirits too, but this it looks like a female warrior. There's something about her energy that makes me think of a stealth or fear, like a fierce, um, but not uh, like a vicious, you know, but uh, intense in a way, focused, driven, um, something, those types of energies. I'm just going to ask her about this weight on her head in the mud 
she shows me that there's a this looks like in a cartoon where they take the mallet and hit the, the person on the head and then they grow a big thing. So I see that underneath there's this big thing that has grown up, like right where the crown chakra would be. It's grown up and out. Um, and this is kind of coating it. But there's actually something of a kind of an energy imbalance about this. And um, she's telling me that it, um, it kind of hurts even. Hmm. Okay, this is going to get a little bit more interesting. So, I'm it's like I'm going into her and I have absolutely no idea how to describe what I'm looking at here. I'm going to do my best. Um it's an oval-shaped space. There's a green and yellow colors, really intense technicolor green and yellow, and they're making up kind of patterns around the edges. It kind of makes me think of um, um, watching the Weather Channel and the rain, it get the yellow and the green kind of intermixed and sometimes orange and red. So it's kind of like that, but it's green and yellow around the edges. And I will say the colors are pretty cool looking. And this space also has a real congestion in here because when I'm walking in, um, I feel I feel a density to the air. And um, there's nobody here, though. That's kind of um, expected there to be somebody here or something more than this here. Okay. This is also, I will say, I'm feeling a lot of energies and it's uh, interlinking and describing this is uh, challenging, which is kind of fun for me. <laughs> okay, it's... So there's energy that is coming down now from the center into this oval space, which could be described as like the mental body space. It's kind of what it's like. And I'm going into the center and this comes down and it's really intense, bright, neon, super cool looking pink. And it's almost like this weird thing that grew up is now growing down into. But it's, it's also starting to feel better. Um, it feels slightly better. Hmm. Okay, where in the world do I start next? There's just so much going on. There's so much to look at in here. It has to do with the, um, let's just say, the face. The, the whole face region, mental body region, the head, okay? Let's just say it's all having to do with the head. That's what, I, what is blinking at me the most right now. And when I look at the head, I examine the energy of the head, I'm looking at the other energy bodies as we go downward. Um, and I'm looking at how everything is interconnected and working together. There's a lot of energy stored here. A lot of energy here. Um, but we need to disperse it down. <laughs> so we got to give the other energy bodies a chance because they too are third eyes and stuff like that. <laughs> the heart and the stomach, the throat. like It's all a part of our infinite um, eye, our infinite soul. So we got to send some of this energy down so we can balance it with all the other um, awesome workers of our energy body because they're, they're brains too. They're minds as well. I'm still, I'm sending it down right now. I'm just still sending it down. And um, I tell this space, I say, wow, I have no idea how you're processing all this energy in here, but I'm kind of blown away. Um, but let's go ahead and disperse it down so it's flowing uh, more freely through all the other energy bodies. I'm still sending it down. Okay, let's give it a minute here. Let me feel how things are doing right now. Okay, the next thing, um, I will say energy is moving downward. There's still quite a lot to do here. But there's something of a pumpkin. Your head's look, just turning into a pumpkin. This is all within this uh, very attractive, stealthy, um, looking elf woman with a tan skin, gorgeous, really straight blonde hair in a tropical environment. Um, this is within her, within you. This is also a part of you. You. This whole story is is your energy field. So, okay. I don't know why, but I see a pumpkin, so I'm gonna, I, I just turn you into a jack-o'-lantern, so you've got eyes and nose and a mouth, and you're smiling like pumpkins do, right? 
at least the olden day pumpkins because today's pumpkins we there there's all different types of creative faces they have these days but okay you're smiling like an old-fashioned jack-o'-lantern um okay okay there's another new thing going on here okay hmm um so um so it's a really amazing smile on this jack-o'-lantern but when i look through the face um i see there's a it's all kind of dimmed out um so like the light got burnt out on the candle and it kind of turned uh black in here and black isn't um evil or anything like that it's just there's some element of sadness that kind of um happened here and so I see that inside the jack-o'-lantern. It makes me sad, actually. <laughs> because when the candle blows out in the jack-o'-lantern, it's like its spirit um, went away, you know? And that you were affected by this. <sighs> you were affected by this. And I think it has something to do with it. kind of echoes about the witchcraft, the witch story, um, and how you moved on. But you, um, you felt like... Um, you've moved on from the spirits because you're exploring new things um but i don't feel that you actually properly moved on because your heart still feels a connection with those spirits um i feel like those spirits are still a part of you you know um because spirits are a part of our life and it, it doesn't matter whether we're in a, um, a community of um, witches studying a certain type of um, witch, witch healing or witch um, learnings um, or if we're energy workers doing Reiki or whatever the spirits work with us there's no boundaries there's nothing that is going to define whether or not a spirit could work with us or not um, it's whether we um, how we feel within ourselves if we are allowed to to work with that spirit or not we're allowed to work with any spirit we want we're allowed to work with any spirit it's just sort of like well i can't go to that country because that um because i don't live in that country so i have to stay in this country it's like there's no boundaries there's no borders um whether it's in the human world we can freely travel right um maybe sometimes not but the spirit realm though is free it is so ridiculously free. It's freer than we could imagine. Um, and so we can work with any spirits and nothing of this human world defines whether or not we can work with those spirits, okay? So I feel like there's something of your own heart that um, um, there's some sort of still connection here that's actually quite meaningful. Um, but I feel like the candle is meant to come back, um, the, to come back to life. Um, and perhaps even to get to know these spirits in a new level or a new way, um, in your own way. So I, outside of the, the rituals of the, the group um, of witches that you were with, um, I think there's more to this, okay? I'm just going to tell you that as best I know right now, but I'm going to keep looking. So this is pretty hard for you, and I want to take this just this pumpkin off, but it's like it's attached to your neck, and it won't come off. And uh, this is interesting. I ask you um, to show me your true form. Show me your true form. Um, and I think that's the question here is, um, what are your gifts, and um, what is your identity when it comes to sharing the gifts of spirit? It hasn't been, it's not known. You're hiding it from yourself. And so we've got the happy jack-o'-lantern, but um, it's hiding the true you. So something um, about the true you, um, we got to get that out. <laughs> There's a weird resistance here with this. And I think this is the one thing that you want to know about. But for some odd reason, you're um, putting blocks upon yourself um, so it always remains a mystery. When it's actually fear of knowing yourself. Believe it or not, a lot of us are afraid to know ourselves. A lot of amazing spiritual healers and psychics um, create the most weirdest life circumstances to ensure that they never become this powerful god and goddess of the earth, you know? Um, because the world, they don't want to freak out the world or freak out people, but really, um, that's us uh, allowing 
those that aren't um, in that role to just uh, to kind of be above us in a way. Um, I don't like to say above, below, you know, I we're all equals here, but um, but there's something of bringing out your true gift that you're you're creating an energetic circumstance where it will always remain a mystery but why would you do that to yourself a lot of uh, spiritual types of people um, always feel in the dark about their gifts because they're hiding it from themselves and something of the way the world is structured um, we're trying to fit into a logical place so we get challenged to see um, our true selves we get challenged to see it it's the best way I can describe what this means to me. All right, I'm gonna ch I'm gonna just take a, some new steps here, um, and I'm just looking at all of you, and you're covered in mud, um, with the jack o' lantern um, on top. E your skin and everything is covered in mud, brown mud. I can't even see your skin because it's all covered in mud, and then the jack o' lantern. And I reach my hand into your heart and I, I say, wow, you're amazing. You're amazing. And when I say that, your heart feels like um, it, it longs to really ignite. And w the caliber of what this thing could ignite to, it's actually cold in here, you know? Because if you were like a super hot star, in the sky and you're only burning you know like 10 times less hot it would actually feel cold you know so there's something about how your heart is burning what it's capable of and where it's at is actually feels cold um that's a compliment just so you know <laughs> like you can really grow here <laughs> so that's kind of a cool thing to know about yourself wow so my heart can get really bright huh yes it can <laughs> so I'm going to actually go into your heart um, further and let's see what's going on in here. Okay, so some stuffed up, it's kind of stuffed up. Um, hmm, how would I describe it? I feel like there's a lot of pathways, but there's lots of um, tissue or it's like kind of all the pathways are kind of um, full of st stuff in them. So it's all just, it's just one room, but really it's a room with all these pathways, but they're all kind of stuffed full of these tissues. I feel like these spirits want to talk. I mean, I feel like these spirits that you were working with two years ago are wanting to talk to you, like actually wanting to talk to you um, and wanting you to, to talk to you. I mean, I really do. Let's see. Let's see. Let me, let me look at one of these names. Okay. There's a reason I was thinking Hawaii, whether they're related to that type of energy. There's something about you and that energy um, that, that makes sense to me. Um, and it doesn't surprise me the first image I see is kind of in a tropical jungle-like. Um, this stealthy, this very attractive um, tan, I mean, she's really attractive, um, stealthy elf woman. She's like a nature woman, you know? There's something unique about her and she stands alone. I mean, there's nobody else there, just her. But she's also focused. She's also very focused on whatever it is that she's focused on. I'm still getting her into balance so we can decide if this is the right the right way to be, you know? If, if this is really what we want, if this is correct, you know? Something about the big pile of mud on the head. There's, we got to figure out why does it look like this? Why is the energy saying this is how I feel, you know? Um, I, let me just, I just want to look at some of these names here again, and I'm just going to pick one out. Okay. Ocean, Ocean on my feet. Other spirits. Olokan, Ishu, Ishuai, Oran, Mula. Um, I'm going to, the, the, okay. And these names are powerful. Um, there's just so many. I don't, I mean, I don't even know where to start. I feel like I want to do every single one of them. Um, let's just let's just do Ocean because that's the first one you 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 named. Oh, I, yeah, and then Ocean on my feet. Let's just do that one, okay? Um, all right, I'm just gonna say Ocean. Hey, um, I was wondering if maybe you'd like to share a message. Maybe um, maybe 
there's something more. I just feel like you you matter. I mean, I feel like every one of these spirits matters. In fact, you know what? I'm going to bring them all into this hard space room where all the pathways are plugged up because there's enough pathways as there is spirits that you've named here. And I'm going to just define each pathway um, is working with one of these spirits. All right. We're just going to do that. I, I feel like that's the way to go about this. So I'm doing that and I want to see how this opens things up. Okay, so you still don't know truly your deep down true relationship with them. But um, putting them within your heart, um, it does open up the pathways and the flame that you were, you were looking for in the pumpkin head is now starting to ignite within your heart where the true psychic ability comes from is in your heart. Your heart sees literally everything. Um, so your heart is the third eye is literally all your psychic senses can be found in the heart. And uh, so this is igniting now because these spirits create a candle light or flame for you. They're like soul family members. I mean, there's a real beautiful connection here. Okay, now I'm going to stop there. I'm just going to go a little bit deeper here. All right, there's another strange wound and uh, you could say this is with the heart, this with the emotional gut, but it also is kind of protruding out of the belly, um, above the belly button, but not quite to where emotional gut is, but just slightly above the belly button. It's like another one of those strange things that grew out of the head, but this one is growing out, like just, just above the belly button. It's just growing straight out, but I feel kind of a twinge in the heart and a twinge in the emotional gut area about this. Hmm. Okay. This one's uh, pretty muted. And so I'm just going to dive into the emotional gut for a minute and see what, what it knows about this thing. Hmm. You don't want to talk to me about it. Um, I'm going to have to do yet another approach here. So I'm just going to look at you full length here as you choose to look. Um, and I want to see what else might know about this, okay, in your energy field. Because there's a weird coincidence. I mean, this looks exactly the same as this here. Um, so there's something about a pattern here, and I want to, make, I want to understand what this pattern is. Okay, a new message. I see these spirits you are referring to, and they're each one sitting on a rock that's like a seat. Um, and then there's like a campfire, but it's a beautiful fire. And they're sitting around it in a semicircle. And then the expression of you is walking towards that fire. And you don't look like the girl in the, in the tropical jungle. You look different this time. You have really intense, it's like a brownish red colored hair, and it's very curly. And you're on a beach. And you don't know what to say to them. I mean, so you're just sort of standing here as though you, you, you're almost acting as though you don't know them. Um, you, it's a weird, it's a weird energetic exchange. It's like a, you created a wall of numbness. I mean, you really did. So this here is wanting to reach you. And so it's time for you to say okay to that. You're wanting to know about channeling with your voice and doing stuff with your hands. These are the ones to talk to. And perhaps there's something of a, um, there's a reason why you kind of moved on from that witch, um, the, the experience of being the witch light worker. Um, these spirits may be looking to share energy in a new way through you, um, in a new unique way through you. We don't know. You know how Reiki starts as one thing. Now there's so many Reikis out there, and it's reaching everybody. I mean, Reiki is reaching everybody. It doesn't want to just be one thing. It wants to be all different types of things. It wants to be a creative Reiki. So 
these spirits too also want to be their like creative thing they don't want to just be in one way or just just through this group um but through like in a new way what if that's what it feels like i mean there's more to this than we know i gotta open you up to that All right, you're actually, your deeper conscious is receiving this message and actually um, more of this energy up here, I can feel it actually sending down um, on its own accord. I didn't have to force it down. You actually are choosing now to send it down. It's like you're holding your butt, <gasps> you know, like puffed out cheeks or something, but it's like a lot of energy in your head. But now it's just, it's, you're choosing to send it down. So, and as you send it down, this weird barrier and the numbness is starting to dissolve more and you're starting to feel present with these faces, okay? And they're asking you to step into the fire. So where you would give, um, you would light a candle for them at times, um, even, you know, today you might still light a candle in honor of them. Um, they're saying you need to step into the flame. Um, so you're honoring them with a candle, but what about them wanting to honor you with a candle? Them wanting to honor you with healing? Them wanting to honor you with their presence? So only you get to come to them? What about they want to come to you? Um, so how does this relationship really work if it's just about you just coming to them and then that that's it? They actually want to come to you too. They want to do like candles for you too, you know? So they're saying they want you to step into this flame. It's a big, I mean, it's a, it's a small campfire, but with a really big flame, okay? <laughs> and it kind of reminds me of a candle in a way, but it's like a human-sized version. So we're in a, in a place with human beings, and so we're going to step into this. <sighs> they all look like people sitting on rocks, and they remind me of... Um, they remind me of a lion, like like native. Um, there's paint. There's a, there's just a Hawaiian vibe to it, and uh, there's something very healing. There's something. I mean, Hawaii is defined as like the heart of the earth kind of thing. There's something truly magical about this, um, and it reminds me of Hawaii. Okay, that's what it reminds me of. It might remind you of Japan. I don't know, but you know, this is where what it reminds me of. So, and I see them all look like, um, like Hawaiians, okay? Hmm. You step in and uh, you're very vulnerable and there's a weird sense of, uh, there, you have a wax built up on you and the flame is starting to drip the wax off, okay? And you're aware that uh, you kind of knew deep down inside that this relationship was severed um, in an uncomfortable way with these friends. Because these spirits were friends. Um, something didn't re resolve quite right with that. So you're kind of expressing how um, something felt wrong to you. And now I'm starting to understand what that weird bulge is that came out of the gut below the emotional gut, slightly below it. Um, that has to do with this because it's about feelings, okay? We uh, digest our feelings. And as, as you're in the flame and this wax is melting and I'm feeling this communication, which is not like, um, hi, oh, I miss you guys. It's more like um, kind of like you're not wanting to look them in the eye. Um, you don't necessarily feel ashamed, but you kind of feel like some un unreconciled energies um, that don't didn't digest well with you. Um, and it creates a, it created a basically... Um, an energy block, okay? Um, it's like so, like the cartoon, they take the mallet hit on the head and it goes, Dorp! you know, it's like, that happened here. That is also an energy block. And so, and it hurts, okay? It was like a blow to the gut and it hurts. And they're really encouraging you to, to know that they, they always understood this. <laughs> I mean, they always knew. And uh, I'm, a, I'm actually just moving the energy, circulating the energy around your stomach. Um, digestive, okay. A little dizzying around the head because the energy is continuing to flow downward because it was just way too much energy up there. So just circulating it some more. 
crying, some tears, uh, releasing some tears right now. We're almost through, but you're still kind of uh, resist. It's not necessarily resisting, but you're very slow. Your frequency is very slow. Kind of, um, uh, it's not shame, it's not embarrassed, but it does feel kind of like very tiny bit like that. Um, it's not definable, but it is kind of, um, kind of like that. Okay. The wax is melting more and you're starting to actually feel the warmth of the fire. And this fire is love and this fire is healing too. Um, and this fire is wisdom as well. So it's love, healing, and wisdom. And your relationship with fire is special. And your relationship with these spirits is special because they're spirits of 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 love and, and wisdom and healing and fire. And, yeah. I mean, they're spirits of these factions, you know? All spirits are of these factions. But there's something unique in the frequency they're sharing in their own unique way to as a gift to humanity, as a gift to you, through you, um, in your unique way, you know, that would be different than all the other spirits out there, than the Reiki, than the, all the other ways that we, you know, the Palladians and the, all the other ways that the messages are coming to earth. We need a million messages saying the same thing, you know, from different voices of love and from different angles of love. And the healing is all the same. It's all about love. It's just what you're receptive to, what works best for you. So, so I share my own style, my own gift. This is just my version. My version isn't the best only way to go. There's so many beautiful spirits, so many beautiful people, so many people sharing beautiful messages from spirits, alien beings, the earth, um, we're from within ourself, you know? Um, this is a part of you, uh, definitely. And you can, you are one of these people. You're one of these people. <sighs> We all are. Some of us are closer to that role than others is the best way I could define that. And um, this, the wax is continuing to melt and I'm actually, you're feeling the heat of the fire, but it's, it's becoming more pronounced. And uh, they're rebirthing you in a way to another version of yourself that reminds me of the stealthy elf girl. I mean, she has the pointy ears, but she looks totally human um, in every way, other way. She is nude. She doesn't wear any clothes. She was kind of crouched because of the heaviness that was weighing down upon her. Um, but she was, she's kind of fierce because she'll stand there alone in the rain and still, and still stand there. Like, she doesn't fall over. She doesn't give up. She doesn't cry and say take it away you know she doesn't she stays strong you know she stays true to what it is she's focused on even if it there are burdens to it um there's something of a deeper trust that that this is all releasing as it's meant to and this is this this has been a part of your energy field you're doing a lot of great work um and it's time for this to be released it's time for this stuff to be healed your energy to flow in a new way um rebirth your identity so you can take the next step just like you're saying um on your spiritual awakening journey i mean this this session is the next step here and it's going to open you up to those spirits again who never left you, ever. Never, ever. And they were there before you even knew them. <laughs> okay, so we need to, I mean, you're, you're rebirthing into this, uh, a, a new identity of an old version of yourself, okay? It's just coming back into the cycle of time, of the timeline of your soul's identity. Um, that reflection, that vibration, that um, ex expression of your, your soul. So, um, but I do feel that there's a, like a triangle. Um, so, so here's your torso and then you draw a triangle just below, below the rib cage. Um, there's the emotional gut. And then you go down a little bit. There's that bulge, which is actually starting to go back in um, and then lower. But th there's a triangle of energy here that goes down um, that we need to focus on. I really feel that's the next thing. So... Okay. Okay. 
there's a a very exhausting uh, energy happening right now this has to do with a lot of energy that energies that have shifted that are becoming self-realized and you're starting to feel them now and you're feeling them in the the head region straight down through the center um, to the top of the pyramid, okay? But this this is strange because, again, the energies need to just be flowing, you know, circulating, like like the blood bloodstream. If there's a clot in your, in your veins, in your arteries, you're not going to live much longer. So what happens when there's a clot in our energy fields? The flow gets all jacked up and then, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, we have our, our various challenges as human beings. So got to remove the clots, you know, somehow... And all this amazing work you're doing, there's still um, there's still stuff, energies that need to be reconciled, and we're not always aware of what those are. We need uh, we need other people to help us to find them. We need new experiences to help us to find them, and then as you find them, you can start dispersing your energy in new ways and discovering yourself in new ways. So. Um, so I'm trying right now I'm talking to you but I'm also working on removing the, this triangle thing this needs to flow naturally all the way down and from the bottom all the way back up again like so there needs to be no um boundaries I mean I shouldn't feel a separation between emotional gut down um and then this kind of just so, sort of like this it should just all go down all go up like it should circulate like breathing in and out you know it should be like that All right, the these um, they all look like men to me, but I'm quite certain they're gonna be different variations of reflections of divine feminine, divine masculine. But I see them all as wise men, okay? But they all look like Hawaiian Hawaiians, and they have paint and uh, um, jet black hair, and there's a silkiness to the hair and tan skin and they're different sizes and different heights um some are robust and some are skinnier some are taller than the others like they all look uniquely different and i feel like it's time now because this triangle thing is starting to dissolve more so it is starting to come down again getting that natural flow going um, I'm going to go into your heart again and see how things are going in there. You're still in the flame um, at this beach. But let's see what's going on in this area. Okay, I'm back in the space where each of the, one of those spirits is represented by a pathway. And they're actually starting to feel the flow of your energy into themselves again and, and into you. And it's going to heal your heart a great deal. Um, because you're very, there's a really beautiful connection between you and them, and they're, they sh say a good way to describe them is uh, like you see a Native American chief has all the feathers and all the kind of decoration, and um, the wise man. Um, they each kind of show me that they that would be a great way to describe um, what where their placement is or their their level of um, of achievement. You you could say. But I see each one of them as a, a wise man that I would um, really like to hear um, their perspective of things, like their eagle eye view of, of the bigger picture. All right, there's a new thing happening here. This is something we got to clear out, okay? Um, so I'm just going to stretch the energy out as it's moving through. <sighs> okay, so in your heart, there's the development of a black ball of energy. And these men, again, it's the semicircle, and there's the pathways. And then here I walk in. This ball is just like a big black tar ball, like the biggest like the first ball of frosty the snowman but just the biggest you could possibly make <laughs> um but black tar 
And it would be in the place of where the fire is that you've stepped into our healing within the flame and the wax is dripping off. Now this big ball is in the center here of the semicircle of the men. So let me look at this. There's a parallel here. I don't know why. I just start throwing stars. Like I literally just, I apparently have lots of stars and I'm just throwing stars into it. And they even look as like a golden star. So when you do really good as a kid in school, you get the gold star. So there's lots of gold stars I'm throwing into this tar ball. This again is part of the identity that you're um, resisting uh, stepping into. Okay. It's hidden in here. And the stars are um, helping to dissolve the mud that is caked around your true identity. So I'm still throwing the stars out. So, so there's a bit of a weird um, wiggle of confusion. Um, uh, vi vibrational. I mean, it's kind of shaky a bit. Um, it's aware though. But it's not yet like, yes, I'm ready. It's still just kind of um, like a soul floating of the in, above the body, experiencing through the eyes of the body, but not being fully in the body, not walking the walk upon earth, only kind of doing it, you know? So it's like, um, yes, but um, I don't want to become too close or too connected to that, um, to that identity and I'm quite certain it's because it's a profound identity it might be too profound for a logical mind you know <laughs> so every little step we take gets you closer and closer and closer to this so I I mean we I might I am determined to get you there by the end of this session okay okay so okay so rain is starting to fall in this room within the heart. And again, the stars have been dissolving the mud, but the rain is starting to wash the mud down. And each one of these spirits is sort of stands in honor of you and they send their energies to you to help you um, with this, to help you with this. And you're struggling. You're really struggling. And I see, you You know, it's your typical witch on the stake um, image. You're a woman, um, but the fire never burned because the rain never stopped falling. So, but I see you tied to a, a pole, a wooden pole, and all these sticks and everything. Um, and you're just trying to get out of all these ropes. Um, they never could set the fire because it never stopped raining. So then you just were left there. Um, and so that's, that's what they're showing me. Um, this may very well be a real past life, but this this story is going to um, speak very loudly to your deep essence, okay? Um, so they show me you on this wooden post, all the sticks, and it just never stops raining, and they never could start the fire. And you're um, bound there, and you can't get the ropes off. You can't get free of the ropes, and there's nothing you can do. There's literally nothing you can do. So what do you do? You're cold. I mean, I feel so cold right now. I feel abandoned and confused. Kind of grateful that it's raining. I feel, I feel weird. <laughs> Yay, I don't have to be burned. But no, I'm on this pole. I can't get out from the ropes and I'm freezing. And it won't stop raining and that nobody will come for me. It's like I've been left here. It's not uh, so awful experience, really. It's so conflicting. I'm happy. I'm not happy. And both are legit here. <laughs> they want to show me the, the process of death. They want me to see the process of death and birth into new life. And it's okay to let go. I mean, they're really saying it's okay to let go of what... Um, of, conf of, a, of conflicting experiences. That's what they say. It's okay to let go of conflicting experiences. This is again, again, 
really painful um, emotion, like really raw emotion in the emotional gut, okay? And just below it, very weird place to have a huge energy pocket, but it's there. And so we're just circulating this. It's okay to let go of the conflicting experiences. And I'm just sort of watching you. The rain just keeps falling and then the sun comes out and it's shining so bright and it warms your skin. It's like you fell asleep for a long time, several days in a way. And it's like the sun wakes you up and you're still on the post. But somehow the rain helped to do something with these ropes um, to give you a, a chance to be set free. And when the sun comes out and dries all of this up, uh, things are looser or you're able to wiggle out. That's what it's like. And you're able to be set free into new life. So I see one version of you that um, is free from the experience and one version of you that is always um, awake in the rain and always awake and aware in the rain and the cold. But never having fallen asleep, it's like the soul fragment experience. It's for eternity, this part of your soul will always be in this moment. But yet you're not in this moment at all, are you? And it, no matter what version of a moment that you're in, this moment we can just release from. Because we don't need to be connected to that moment anymore or the, the emotions that relate to that moment. Okay, good, good, really good energy flows. Um, it's, it's just, it's better than it's ever been here. Jar in the throat, weird, um, like the tip of my nose is like making me feel things. <laughs> so I'm having this moment right now. My head feels exhausted. <sighs> Tired. And, um... Now I'm starting to feel as though I'm the one that was in the rain and now I finally have fallen asleep. And in my sleep, I leave my body and I leave everything behind because I don't need to be a part of it anymore. But there's something to this because I've got to leave it properly with at peace with it. So I'm just falling asleep right now. And in my sleep, I say to all of the spirits, to my own soul, to, to the love of all, I say thank you for the blessing of this moment. And if it is your divine will that I be released from this experience, then I am ready. If it is not yet time, then I am also at peace. No matter what choice, I am at peace. And everything just simply dissolves and disappears. And the only thing that remains is this wooden post. There's no sticks here. There's no person tied to it. There's nothing. There's just this wooden post in the ground. And the wood even has con a consciousness. So I touch the wood and I say, why are you still here? The wood says that I'm waiting. The wood. So this could be a metaphor, like a play on words, like this wood beam is saying, but the wood as in all the trees are saying, you know. I've been waiting. It's like I've been waiting for you to return to me. Um, I've been waiting, I'm waiting for something to happen for, I mean, it's the wood is speaking here. Let me just continue to process this. So I experience you now stepping in as what was the original identity, but it feels like you've grown so much 
and you touch the wood and you say, I am here. And the wood turns into a man, actually. And the man's uh, eyes glow with happiness to see you. And you both look like warriors, um, but you wear very little clothing. I mean, he's, but it's kind of ornamental uh, clothing. And, um, and you're holding each other right now. And I see the male and the female now merge together as one light, one star. And I see this star born um, within your third eye mind, like born in your mental body, okay? This is a big deal. And with this starlight, it shines down um, and it opens the throat up. And it continues to shine down, straight down, like right along the line of the spine. And it's just shining right straight down through all of your energy bodies, right on through. Okay? And your heart is hearing the song of the star. And your heart is uh, waking up to um, a new song. And I see a cloud, a shadowy cloud version of you just leaves you. And, and it's just like smoke on the fire. It just leaves. It just blows away. And it was time. Everything's very peaceful right now. So my question at this point in the journey is, are these spirits um, here to heal you, to reconcile this, this uh, congestion that developed? Are they here to work with you? Um, everything is so peaceful right now, I can't even feel, feel them because... It's like that peaceful glowing that I, I don't need anything else anymore. I don't need anything else, but it's just energy right now. So I'm just letting this continue to happen. And then I'm going to wait until I experience, have the next experience. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So this is the next experience. Uh, we are back on the beach and it was raining and the fire was put out and you're standing before them looking at you and you're in the center of their attention. It's kind of cool. You're at the center of their attention. You have no idea. I mean, you're still don't, you still don't have any idea um, who you are is kind of what this is like. Um, because when I feel you come alive, you're just like, uh, um, you're not choosing to be aware of why they've chosen you or, you know, why they, you don't seem to be acknowledging it. Um, and you should be. And I think, so one, another speculation about why this might be is really amazing spiritual uh, speakers, um, I think some of the best, um, would never want to, I mean, they are challenged to really embrace their true divinity, their true power, because they don't want to go into the realm of ego. And uh, so I've, I have been shown things that um, would encourage me to think that I was so special, right? But I don't want to live in the realm where I would be deemed more special than anybody else. So don't tell me, you know, I tell the spirit, don't tell me that I'm special. But then they say, why? Why don't we have a right to tell you that you are special? And I say, wow, I guess that's probably one thing I'd really like to hear. <laughs> that I could be special. I think we all want to feel special, you know. And I think there's something in you that needs to allow yourself to feel special. And that's going to help you too. And to allow yourself to feel chosen. All right? Chosen. These 
these spirits are still here and they're they aren't just here to heal you to get you to the next step they're wanting to talk to you they are they're not going anywhere <laughs> but they love you so what would you want them to go somewhere <laughs> you have loving family here um, that's helping you to see how s your specialness, okay? Your specialness. What makes you um, the blessing that could only be you, you know? The blessing that is you. Because I can't be you. Only you can be you. So you get to be the special blessing, you know? And you need to allow yourself to be. Be that. And um, when, you're, when you're an amazing beautiful soul like yours um and it's it can be very hard to open up to that idea but boy if you can do it um if you can say it's not about ego it's not about anything it's just acknowledging um myself it's just acknowledging what i've done and how i've gotten here and i should be proud of myself and i do have special things to share and why couldn't i be chosen um it's going to help you in your work here to help humanity okay it's an important part of the next step for you it is Yeah, even more of this energy is actually pushing down further and it's actually finally getting into the sexual body. I can feel it finally oozing on in there and it feels really good because um, you need to have that nurture and that that divine truth about you and um, it's like the most warmest reality and it comes into a place of um, true love and beauty of self, right? Because um, sexual body isn't just about intimacy with others, it's intimacy with ourself too, and loving ourselves, um, and allowing that energy also to be received in a space of intimacy, you know? Um, so it's like really beautiful to feel all of this energy um, actually trickling through your energy bodies and finally getting to this place where it's coming to the, the intimacy of self-love, you know? It's super nice to feel that. <laughs> yeah, so good. And believe it or not, there's quite a jam in this space as well. A lot of people have jams in this space, but there's a big um, old, it's like a old birth, um, the birth of the old. I mean, it's just letting go of the old and it's just kind of birthing out. It's just old black goopy um it looks like an old human like a human covered in black tar goop just it's just shedding a skin it just happens to look like this so you're just birthing out the old okay so you can be the new you can be a reflection of the new and that feels incredibly you feel clean and purified you feel squeaky clean i mean you feel really good right now. You're like a, a dirty car that just went through the car wash. We didn't even know that you were dirty, you know? <laughs> but you feel squeaky clean like a brand new car. Okay. There's a reason why I they're not... These spirits aren't really... Um, like, I really want to... I really want to share more messages from them. But it's almost like... Um, it would be doing you an injustice if I were to do this, because you need to hear their voices first. You need to speak to them and receive their messages before I, <laughs> I share them. Like it would do you an injustice if I spoke for them to you. You need to receive their messages. I'm just gonna put this, um, I just this first name here. Ocean. Ocean. It's just like an ocean. O C E A N, but it's not spelt that way. O S H U N. Ocean. So I have ocean on my feet. I'm going to put ocean on your feet. Okay? I just want to see. I just feel like I need to do that. Okay? Okay, Ocean, let's try this again. I was going to talk to you first, and then I was talking to everybody. Now I'm going to try this again. And I'm placing Ocean on your feet, and Ocean is like a bright sun. 
it's like warm feet. <laughs> it's like a, it's like warm sand, but it's not burning the feet. It's just like, oh, wow, this is kind of nice. That's what it feels like, warm feet. <laughs> it's like pleasant, pleasantly warm feet. That's what's happening. <laughs> it's lovely, so lovely. And a super bright yellow, like warm light. <laughs> Uh, my throat is kind of getting like excited about it and starting to swirl and throat you know chakra colors could be literally anything but it's starting to glow orange right now and yellow and it's like super circulating and happy it's like squishy and happy and like it's squealing right now <laughs> feels so good and it's sending this information into the mental body Mental body is actually like an ocean of energy going back and forth and it feels really peaceful, believe it or not. Not dizzying or anything, like it feels so good. It's like you have the ocean um, in your mind um, and it's so beautiful because the colors are really rich, intense colors. like beautiful intense blue and purple and I start to notice some um, this light from in here pops out a little plug and it starts to shine through and is like a white and silvery light through here and then it goes up a very long ways out into the stars hmm Hmm. And then just some old energy is just kind of coming out of the heart right now. So we're just really clearing out stuff here. That feels good. Hmm. Okay. That's, that's all I got for you. Hmm. You just never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates, Forrest Gump style. <laughs> Thank you for this beautiful opportunity to experience your soul and, and get to know you and all the dynamic ways that you are and to get to share you with the world. <laughs> and um, thank you so much. It's been a very beautiful, touching experience for me. And for those of you watching, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I hope you have a great day.